All right, kids. Today, we're checking out the turbo gauge. If you've seen my latest video, you'd know that my friends at Project Lab B sent me over a box of goodies. One of the things they sent over is the Turbo Gauge 6. It's a 4-in-1 scan tool, digital multi-gauge, trip computer, and light data logger. And when I say light, I mean really light. It only tracks whatever it can read out on the display. It's not really tracking anything serious. You can read and clear check engine lights. You can run several different digital readouts at one time. Like, for example, the Mazda 2 doesn't have an actual coolant temperature gauge. It just has an idiot light. This will tell you what your actual coolant temperature is in real time. It's got a trip computer. You can get your average and real time fuel economy, but that's kind of a pain. I'll get into that. And it logs up to 300 hours of whatever it can read out. And the best feature of all, it comes with the sucker. Bad Chinese to English translation is worth the price of admission alone. So, what do you get? You of course get the gauge itself, the suction cup mount, you get the OBD2 cable, which I have nicely tucked behind the trim. You also get a USB cable and a mini disc to install, I assume, a program for the computer so you can check your data logs and probably install updates. And you get a user's manual, which on some points is kind of vague because, you know, Chinese translation, but this thing isn't too difficult to understand even with meh instructions. The initial quality of most of these items before even turning the gauge on is okay, some things better than others. The cables, they're, well, cables. With the gauge out of the mount and unplugged sitting in your hand, it feels admittedly pretty lightweight and cheap. It is a thin little thing. Give it a squeeze. It feels like it's put together really well, given that it's the cheap plastic and it's so lightweight. The thing works. And because it's not super heavy, it doesn't overpower the suction cup mount while you're going down the road. And speaking of the mount, it's pretty good. You can stick it to the dashboard, it's got a sticky pad on it, or you can suction it to the windshield, whatever your preference. I chose to stick it to the dashboard so that I can continue to use my sunshade. It doesn't obstruct my view of the road, I think it would have more up on the glass. I kind of like it here. It's very tuner car in that location. It looks like I've got like a Super AFC or something. It's kind of intimidating for people who don't know this car is slow. Since it's plugged into the OBD2 port, that's where it gets its power, it shuts on and off automatically with the car, which is pretty cool. As the car is warming up, you can see it working. I've currently got engine coolant temperature, intake air temperature, vehicle speed, engine speed, real-time fuel economy, and a voltmeter. And you can change these readouts to many other things. For example, press the down arrow, it highlights one, and you press the up arrow to... <sighs> Oh my god, my one gripe about this thing is the buttons. You have to, like, jam your finger at the buttons to get them to work, so that's where the Chinese touch quality is coming in. You really have to put a lot of pressure on these buttons, at least on mine, to make it work. So I've obviously got it currently on the gauge screen. I'll show you how to navigate around. You've got an up and down arrow, that's how you navigate the menus. This is the basically the save and accept button here in the middle. And then this back arrow is how you back out and how you get to the menu. So, scan, you can go in, you can read your codes and things like that. Gauges, you obviously have already seen that. We've got our trip meter, you can check your current trip today, you can get your range to empty. Go to review, five records found, it just like tracks your drive and things like that. It's non-useful information I've found. Fuel, you go in here. Now, if you want your fuel mileage stuff to be accurate, you've got to manually go in and put in your fuel ups and everything. Getting through the menus is kind of a pain, especially if you're at the gas station and stuff. I've owned this car long enough to know, judging by just this readout, whether or not I'm getting good fuel economy. So I'm personally not going to use this thing just because I know. It's just a pain to keep the fuel mileage readouts, real time and average, accurate if you've got to go in and do all this stuff. It doesn't read it from the car. We go in here to set up. So in here you've got your time, you can set the date and the current time. It doesn't display it anywhere, so I don't know why you can do that. 
you can set your rates and everything. As standard, it comes in kilometers per hour and like liters per gallon and things like that. You can change it to miles per gallon, miles per hour. You can input your engine size down here, your type of fuel. This is the fuel tank size. And I keep putting in 11.3 because that's what the two has and it doesn't save it. It always goes to 11.1. .1. So there's some little operational maladies there. But see, it saves 1.5 liter engine. So let's go back out to our gauges. The car's been running for a while. You can see it working. See the tack. Tack works. The vehicle speed sensor is pretty accurate. It's within like one mile per hour. The real time fuel economy, even though I haven't adjusted it or anything, it seems to read out fairly accurately given what I know about the car's capabilities. So how do you change one of these readouts? You just use the up and down arrows. And it's a slow process, I gotta say. You hit the down arrow, it'll select one of these, and to change it, you do the up arrow. And it does all these things, these like fuel system status, calculated load. I don't know what any of those readouts actually mean. Short term fuel trim, long term fuel trim, like, don't know. And this is the fun one. It's got a horsepower readout gauge, and it's actually not mentioned in the owner's manual. This thing is really optimistic. Let me show you. So there it is in action, going down the road, reading out things. You got, you're gonna really enjoy this horsepower readout though. Let's do a second gear pull. that maybe it's like a dyno in that it reads theoretical horsepower like a dyno. And I tried a fourth gear pull at one point and it did the same. It still gave me like 130, 140 horsepower. And there's nowhere to put in like a vehicle weight or anything to make it more accurate. That's okay though. I know the two's slow. I don't need to be reminded of it in real time. Oh yeah, and small note about this. If you hit this button when you're in the gauge screen, It'll randomize all your gauges and you'll have to reset them, so so don't hit that when you've got the gauge screen pulled up. So in closing, what can I say about the turbo gauge? Well, speaking on quality, I'm gonna have to give it like a 5 out of 10. It's right up the middle, the mount is really good, the operation is good, it works pretty well seemingly, but the quality of the materials of the actual gauge itself, they're pretty cheap, the buttons are hard to work with, the user interface, it's difficult and frustrating when those buttons choose not to work or choose to be too sensitive. So if you're looking for a fuel economy gauge, this isn't the thing for you. I think it's just too difficult to use for that sort of thing. You'll spend so much time trying to input your numbers and stuff. If it's even giving you accurate fuel numbers, you'll get tired of it and you'll be mad that you spent $65 on something that's really annoying to use. There are better ways, easier ways to track your fuel economy than this. Honestly, if you're going to buy one of these, buy it for the scan tool and multi-gauge functions. The rest is just extra crap you don't need. And it's really good to have the multi-gauge function on a car like the Mazda 2 that doesn't have any real readouts to all idiot lights. Having an actual number for coolant temperature, air intake temperature, your voltmeter, things like that, that's where the turbo gauge really shines. If the Mazda 2 was capable of putting out a signal and if there was a function on the gauge for oil pressure, this thing would be the total package, but unfortunately that's just the way it is. Do I recommend it? Yes, but it depends on what you're going to use it for. Fuel economy gauge, don't bother, don't buy it, you're not going to like it, I don't think. But if you want the multi-gauge function and the scan tool function, then yes. I do recommend this. It's 65 bucks. It's pretty inexpensive compared to other things, and it's currently on sale on Lab B, so maybe go check it out. I like it. It does the things that I want it to do, and I'm looking forward to being able to use it on a racetrack as a little bit of extra insurance to make sure that I'm not beating up my car too much. In closing, I'd like to once again thank my friends from Project Lab B for sending over the turbo gauge as well as the other items from the last video. And if you're interested in the turbo gauge after seeing this one, head over to their website and give it a look. If not, 
Check out their shift knobs as well as their key tags. It's all on sale currently, so scoop something up and help a small business that supports the car community as well as my channel. That's it for me this time. I hope you guys have enjoyed this one. Thanks so much for watching and subscribing. I'll see you guys in the next one. Now I can show you how it works with the car running, and thank goodness it's hot, I want to put on the air conditioning.